Hello, it's Kelly again with Homesteading Hints, and today we're going to talk a bit about uh, Japanese beetles, kind of how we um, care, well not care for, but try and keep them under control and uh, do that without using a bunch of chemicals, uh, keep them from eating all of our garden vegetables and, and all of our fruit trees and, and whatnot. And, and it's it's pretty difficult this year, the, the Japanese beetles are really bad, um, and uh, so it's kind of... It's kind of been a little bit tough on us this year, but uh, we do have enough plants of different varieties that they have chosen to chew on so far that we're doing okay with our vegetable produce. Um, well, there's P. He's one of the cats that you haven't seen. I think the only cat, cat of the three that you haven't seen, he decided he's going to show up for this video. So, um, But, uh, okay, so first I was going to show you, this is what the Japanese beetles look like, and we have a bunch of them. An elm tree, this is a, an elm tree that's in our fence line. And as you can see, they have really annihilated the tree. They, they pretty much chew them down to the veins and uh, even many times just get rid of the leaves completely. But uh, those are Japanese beetles. Uh, we have a lot of them this year. They hatched early, um, but they are eating at this time. We're right next to the garden and they're eating the, this Chinese elm. So it's, you know, kind of fine for us that way the elm is is a tree that uh, just came up on its own it's a sucker tree and we were going to be cutting it down anyway we will cut it down this fall likely but as you can see they really like it as a plant to chew on so um, they haven't messed with some of our stuff because of that they have gotten into our fruit trees which uh, are back to the the back over here where Libby will swing around I can show you um, that with the apricot they've pretty much we used to have fruit on that apricot tree that she's showing out there and uh that one doesn't have any fruit on it because they ate all of the fruit off of it um but uh they haven't messed so much with the leaves on that one they have eaten some of our apple tree leaves um they will eat the fruit off of it as well um but it's in our chicken yard so hopefully the chickens will kind of keep them down once they get lower to the ground the chickens will kind of keep them a little bit more under control um, I was going to show you the this is a, 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 basically it's a pheromone trap that I designed so that the chickens could eat them and uh, you can buy this this part of it anyway at uh, pretty much I mean at the garden center we have them and a lot of places actually have them and it's a pheromone trap and it usually has a bag hanging down from it and uh, they come up to it and they hit it and they fall down into this bag where you can just take the bag and throw it away when you're done with it. Now I, I have eliminated the bag and uh, just took a two inch pipe and put a, a, a coupler that, that uh, goes up to three inch on top of it and cut notches in it and put this section of the pheromone trap on top of that and then it goes down, the pipe goes to a coupler that's uh, uh, just a rubber coupler that uh, holds it from the pipe to the top of what, what is actually a cat litter container and uh, I just found one that was the same size as the two inch and it happened to be a cat litter container so I got some of that uh, a couple of those and just uh, we used the cat litter anyway but uh, uh, cut the sides out of it and I fill it to water which there's no water in this right now but there was um, fill it with water and then the beetles come and they hit this and they fall down through the pipe into the water so they can't fly away and the chickens come up and eat them right out of the water um, it works it really really well there's I mean you you any of you that have had Japanese beetles and have had these pheromone traps uh, you know that the bag fills up like in a day's time sometime uh, so I never see any beetles in these so obviously the chickens have them eaten before we even know they're around. Uh, but uh, it works out really well. I'll go put it in the pen with them, which is where I brought it from. But uh, I'll go put it in the pen. I'll have to tie it to the fence like I did here, just to hold it steady and fill it with water. And the chickens will just continue to eat them. In fact, it's one of their favorite treats, I know. I still, I, I, I also go through the garden and pick them off in the morning when when there's dew on the ground and they climb to the top and uh, we uh, they climb to the top 
and we knock and I knock them off into a bucket of water and then I take them to like our baby chickens our younger chickens and feed them out to the, them so it kind of works out uh, pretty good that way as far as getting rid of an excess of them I guess you would say we don't we don't uh, spray them at all so we kind of just use whatever methods we can to keep them under control um, uh, we there are a number of other plants that they also prefer which we actually leave we have uh, some zinnias here they do eat the zinnias a little bit um, but they actually prefer what's called smart weed which is this right here and you can see it's been chewed on pretty hard um, they they will take it all the way down to just the stem uh, so we have that as one of our uh, basically it's a, a, a sacrificial plant for them um, and since we just put the zinnias in here occasionally for the pollinators it, we really don't weed into it because it's kind of a pain because we broadcast seed it and actually don't weed it for several reasons because they uh, well, the beetles will eat a lot of this and, and other other pests insect pests will also eat uh, some of these the button weed is this that gets eaten quite a bit by uh, Some of the cucumber beetles and Japanese beetles do that as well uh, There's pigweed uh, that can be eaten by Japanese beetles. I've caught them on that before as well and uh, pigweed also it, it'll bring uh, Cucumber beetles somewhat to it also and so if they're gonna go on to this kind of stuff instead of like our squash right here uh that's perfect that's what we're trying for uh so we just we like to leave a bit of, i mean there's right here is actually a cucumber beetle that's on the pigweed um and uh if he's like i said if he's going to be on that instead of our yeah he's right he's right in there i guess but well he just fell down but uh i'll catch him and crush him if i can but if he's going to be on there instead of on our cucumbers you know that's obviously better for us there is a japanese beetle this is this is a lamb's quarter and there's a japanese beetle eating it right there um so actually we kind of allow some of the weeds in we've learned which weeds they prefer like i said the smart weed is probably their favorite choice for sure um, but they will eat this other stuff and at this point they are eating it over pretty much all of our garden produce except for the okra that has a few holes in it from where they've eaten it and I not will knock them off of those and there's pea again it's and actually so you folks all know our cats are all named just letters and they have J after that so this is PJ and there was OJ and there's TJ and that's just P Jensen O Jensen T Jensen um, because it was kind of an easy way for us to go with it and we wanted OJ because of the orange juice thing um, so we just use the rest of them that way and so he's now here making his presence known but uh, uh, that's how we named these cats they're all they're brothers and sisters so uh, we just kind of went with that and it works out well and they're 13 year old outside cats and they do really well and still catch mice and and even rabbits and things like that so we like to have them around uh, even the one that I'm not overly excited about, she still does her job sometimes. But, uh, okay, some other host plants for, for Japanese beetles that are not host plants, but sacrificial plants. Wild grapes, they love, wild, they, they love any grapes, obviously, but we have wild grapes on the back fence back there. And uh, those, they're devouring Also right intermixed now. with the raspberries. And, yes, it's in with the raspberries. Because they love raspberries too. Raspberries yeah. is another one of their favorites. We have raspberries, I think I may have told you before, around our chicken yard on the outside. That was more of a, a predator control so we could use the brambles to keep the predators from just getting a free shot at the hens when they walked off down the way. Uh, but that come, turns out that Japanese beetles absolutely love raspberries. So they are on those that are eating them like crazy. We have raspberries. We will, we've already picked a few raspberries, but... Uh, there's a lot of them getting eaten by the Japanese beetles at this point. We will have a second crop probably after the Japanese beetles have gone. Most of the time it's after they've gone away or at least thinned down a lot and we can get more from those as well. So the raspberries are kind of a crop that we, we utilize somewhat, but it's just as much utilized for protection and obviously for 
a sacrificial plant, so it works out really good for us. Uh, they love lindens, um, and if you know anything about about lindens and Japanese beetles in town, they just annihilate them. But we have two linden trees, and I'm looking at them right now, but they're a ways off from us here in our yard. And I will be honest with you, they hardly show any damage at all. Um, they have not. They're about 20 foot tall, probably 20 to 25 foot tall right now. And they have not shown any real significant damage from Japanese beetles um, because they prefer some of these other plants. Um, so uh, I think I mentioned this last week that just think about that when you're, not only when you're planting, but also um, when you're pulling weeds and in your, say your fence rows or along the back 40 or whatever you want to call it in your yard, um, that uh, if you take everything away, you're only leaving what you want there. That's the only thing the Japanese beetle has to eat. Well, they're just going to eat it because they eat about anything. But uh, if they have options, and we have, again, we've been doing this for, you know, I guess 10 years now. Well, the beetles have only been here for about five. But uh, they, if they have options, they will choose what they prefer to eat. And we have found that, you know, as I've mentioned, some of the plants that they prefer to eat over our vegetables. Um, so, again, we have, we have a number, I mean, they haven't messed with, Really anything, our beans are fine. Uh, beans are supposed to be one of their favorites, but they haven't even bothered with the beans. So I'm not thinking that it's actually a favorite. I'm thinking that's just one that they utilize in a garden when you have everything else cleaned out of it. Because they obviously don't eat lawn stuff. Um, they don't eat uh, peppers. They don't eat things like that usually, uh, tomatoes. But they will eat, as I said, the okra. They like a lot, which is in the hibiscus family. And they do like hibiscus, so that's a given as to one of the things they're going to chew on quite a bit. Um, if you have to make, uh, if you have roses, they love roses. Um, but we don't have issues with our roses necessarily up in our flower beds either. And again, we have other things in there and other things we're surrounded. Our entire fence line is surrounded by, oh, much like a lot of grapevines and a lot of other stuff that they like. You know, the smart weed will be in there, the pigweed will be in there. Um, the buttonweed, all that kind of stuff is in our fence line. We don't bother to spray it out much. We'll mow up to it. We allow the, those plants to be in the fence just like this. Um, they don't much, although I can show you right here, this is a different one. They don't prefer the ragweed, but here's one that does. Um, it's a little inchworm type of thing that uh, can defoliate some of your stuff. Um, obviously, he's eating the ragweed instead. Um, so you kind of have to give and take a little bit so you mentioned not spraying is there a reason you don't spray oh we don't spray for several reasons first of all we like to have things that uh, we eat not really have chemical on them uh, just a preference of ours to you know, i mean we know what we know what we're eating we know what kind of things are on it because it's only what we've given to it the second thing is with our bees um, and this is an Probably the biggest importance, especially for Japanese beetles, is sprays like seven and eight, which are what you usually use. And I would recommend those if you're going to spray. Um, that's what I would use. But anything that has a flower on it, a bee will approach. And if they approach it and you've sprayed it and they land on it, it will kill them as well. Uh, there is not a, a spray that is... Bee friendly. Choice. Yeah, it's just, just choosing not to it kill kills bees, everything much there it killed they kill everything that it touches that's generally what most sprays do uh, and seven and eight like i said are ones that i would recommend using but i would use them on things that uh okay like say the linden tree uh roses if they don't have a, a lot of flowers in them and or if they have just a few flowers maybe you snip the flowers off before you spray it then the bees don't come around uh, yes you will lose those blooms at that time but uh if you do that, the bees will not approach, or any of the other, the, the bumblebees, all the pollinators, the honeybees, everything will not land on that if there's nothing there for them to pollinate or to grab, you know, nectar from. And so 
if you can kind of be aware of that kind of thing, you, you'll have less of a chance of killing things that you're not trying to kill. Um, and uh, a lot of those things, you know, I mean, on, on plants that don't have flowers, you can spray and the bees won't go there and, and you will get what you're targeting a lot more. I mean, you're still going to get non-target organisms, uh, other insects that maybe even insects that are hunting Japanese beetle or or things like that. You're going to kill all those. So just be aware of that. We try not to do that. Um, we try and at least be kind of symbiotic with nature because we know that uh, along with the bad insects or good insects and along with uh, all that, I mean, they are going to eat stuff. They, they will eat stuff. We know that the rabbits eat stuff, the deer eat stuff, all that kind of thing. But uh, if you can live, I'm not going to say in harmony necessarily because you're always trying to, going to be trying to keep them from getting what is, you know, what you've worked so hard for. But uh, if you can, you just try and, and uh, maybe give up a plant for them or, or give them something else that, you know, I mean, the zinnias are poor pollinators, but if they eat the zinnias instead of our squash, that's okay. Um, the, there's still be enough there to, for the pollinators and we can use them for um, you know the target plant instead of instead of the squash so we'll go ahead and do that kind of thing if we can and and that's what our preference is so um, you know just kind of going through what we do and and uh, that's with all of our insects really our pests but uh, we kind of do it that way there'll be hornworms there'll be things like that I'm just doing it with Japanese beetles because they are one of our bigger problems in really the state of Iowa and in most people's gardens and their flower beds and things like that. So um, just kind of be aware of them being around and what you're doing when you spray and what you're doing as far as that goes. Yes, Lou? Once the video is posted, I do have a video that I'll put in the comments of the chickens using. Yeah, your... she's got one from before. And, and it's pretty funny. Uh, you'll like it. Uh, they pretty well go crazy on it. So um, if you have chickens, I would recommend, I mean, pheromone trap, the one argument with the pheromone trap is, is that it will bring the beetles in, which is true. Um, but if you can target them away from the plants that you really don't want them to have, and in our case, if they're going to get eaten by the chickens, it saves us on feed and uh, the chickens are healthier because it's a good protein source for them. So uh, it, but it's, it's pretty awesome. You'll like it. So, um, I think that's about it. And so until next time, thanks everybody for watching.